Hi everyone, I'm uh, John Fancy from the Logic Apps team, and I'm joined with Derek Lee. I'm also a program manager working on Logic Apps. So today we want to talk about uh, Logic Apps and what's new and what's coming soon. So uh, just a real quick level set. Logic Apps is a graphical workflow and orchestration engine that allows you to quickly and easily build not just integration solutions, but also automation and connectivity to the cloud, to on-premises, and to a whole bunch of other systems that you may have, uh, including building your own connectors. It also is part of Azure Integration Services, which includes messaging in the form of service bus, eventing in the form of event grid, API management and creation with uh, Azure API management, and of course, Logic Apps for the workflow and orchestration. Um, so without further ado, let's just get right into a few announcements we want to make uh, this week at Build. The first one is the GA of our integration service environment. This is the dedicated Logic Apps environment in Azure that gives you full isolation of both storage and network, being able to add Logic Apps into your VNet to enable and facilitate uh, hybrid communication between Azure and your own data center. Also providing uh, dedicated compute so you get uh, predictable performance and consistent performance as well at a flat cost per month, but also with the benefit of being able to scale up and scale down as and when required based on rules that you set. Uh, just as a reference, we have a great customer into Pipeline who've been working with us through the um, private and public previews for integration service environment for ICE. Um, they've been a great partner to us providing feedback and I just wanted to highlight them in terms of why they chose an integration service environment to run Logic Apps in as opposed to the full multi-tenant uh, environment that we have across Azure regions. The primary reasons really were because they needed that VNet isolation, they needed the predictable performance and they wanted the ability to be able to manage the auto scale characteristics of that environment so they only had uh, provision of what they needed when they needed it. And they've been with us on this journey since the first day of our private preview through to public and have actually been running um, uh, integration service environment in production for the last few weeks. So uh, they're based in Calgary in Canada and they're a uh, huge um, oil and gas um, logistics company handling storage and transportation of oil and gas to the industry. Okay, and another announcement, Derek. Cool, so the first thing I want to talk about is inline code, a feature that we're releasing to public preview right now. We recognize while using Logic App to build cloud native applications, connecting different systems together, one often have to write some code to process the data and make it ready to be consumed by the downstream system. So you have options today by using Azure Functions, web apps, or deploy your code using any of the container solutions of your liking. But if you are talking about only a few lines of code, that sounds awful a lot of work to do it. We at Logic Apps, wanting to meet customers where you are, will be announcing this feature allowing you to write and execute code from right within Logic Apps. You don't have any external resource or dependency that I have to configure and you can do everything you want, write the code you want to process the data from right within Logic Apps. And available right now in preview. And really? it is available public preview, so give that a try. So here I have a web application powered by Bing Apps. You can see I have set up a geofence centered in the Washington State Convention Center, covering part of downtown Seattle. And I can use my mouse to move this locator beacon around so simulate physically moving uh, in the city. Every time I move, the event will be sent to event grid topic, which I have a logic app to subscribe to it, talking about building event-driven IoT solutions here. A very common IoT solution that people do is whenever the object carrying such beacon goes outside of the boundary of my geofence, I want to trigger some sort of alert, and I want to use Logic App to do it. But not only do I want to send an alert, I want to figure out what is the distance between the last known location and how far is it away from the center of my geofence. And I can use code to do that. So let me show you how you can do it with inline code feature that we are announcing right now. Here I have a logic app that is already connected to event grid trigger. You can see I have this workflow context object that allow me to reference data 
that is supplied inside the event grid trigger. So you can retrieve the last known latitude and longitude that is emitted by that locator beacon. With the knowledge of the center coordinate, what I can do is then to perform mathematical calculations to figure out the distance between the two points on Earth in meters. Like you see here, you have access to all the output from triggers and actions. And with a return statement, you will be able to make your calculated result available to be consumed by a subsequent action. And in my case, I will be posting a message to my Microsoft Teams channel. So let's go to Teams and take a look at it and make sure the message has been delivered. So I move the beacon outside of the geofence and looks like it's about 260 meters away from the center of the circle. So that is inline code to help you to build logic apps, more powerful logic apps, leveraging the power of JavaScript functionalities that we're announcing right now. Other languages such as PowerShell and C Sharp will be available soon as well. Like I said, it is available public preview and please give it a try, and we'd like to hear your feedback. So yeah, as Derek mentioned, uh, please try this out. Um, go to the link and look at the documentation, um, and let's move on to the next thing. So the next general availability announcement uh, we're really happy to make today is the SAP connector for s for hana and ECC, which has been in preview for the last few months, and it now reaches general availability today for production usage. Um, again, we'd love uh, to get your feedback on this and for you to um, start using this in a production environment now that you get full backing of uh, the standard SLAs for Logic Ads for production usage. Um, but that's not the, uh, the end of this, of course. We have more features planned for the RSCP connector going forward, and I'll talk about those in a little moment. Uh, the connector itself, if you're not aware though, does provide full bidirectional communication to and from SAP. So we have a trigger that allows you to um, create uh, or change data in SAP and actually fire a logic app in a sort of push model from SAP. And also a pull model from logic apps allowing you to call into SAP to um, send data, to create records, and also to retrieve data from SAP, giving you the full power of logic apps to be able to create workflow and orchestration against your SAP environment wherever that resides, either on premises uh, or even when you're hosting SAP in the cloud in Azure. Okay, and then just one final thing, talking about what's coming next. So we have some new VS Code features coming um, very, very shortly. We have uh, new enterprise tools for Visual Studio 2019 support. This has been a long-term ask. So we're rolling forward the schema and um, mapping features that we have in Visual Studio today into the latest version of Visual Studio 19. We already have a Visual Studio 19 extension for the designer, and we're bringing all the other capabilities forward into Visual Studio 2019 as well. Uh, we also have input out for obfuscation coming. Um, so this is a feature where we just recently shipped a key vault connector allowing you to retrieve secrets, and obfuscation is needed so that you can actually hide in the run history of any sensitive data that's flowing through your logic app. So this is an additional feature that's coming very soon as well. Um, the next thing that's coming is RosettaNet support. This is the ability to be able to use the RosettaNet protocol um, in a B2B um, coordination between trading partners and yourselves. It's a very common um, supply chain protocol that's in existence today. Uh, as I mentioned, new SAP connector features. So uh, we have a, a rich roadmap of more SAP capabilities coming, things like TRFC support for batching uh, as well, so you can, again, be able to deal with a batch of messages coming from SAP, as well as dealing with um, multiple uh, operations as part of a transaction and commit operation to SAP and some other things coming later as well. And then finally, some more IBM connectors coming as well on top of the 3270 connector that we just recently shipped in preview to give you capabilities to access IBM mainframe file systems, uh, AS400, um, CICS environments, and others. Um, but uh, before we finish up, why don't we take a look at some of these new VS Code features? Sounds good. Thanks, John. So let's take a look at VS Code. That's the second feature that I want to demo here. Again, continuing our commitment to meet customers where they are, no matter you use Windows or Mac, no matter you prefer the browser experience or a code editor experience, want to make sure you can build Logic App the way you want to build Logic App. We shipped the VS Code extension for Logic App late last year, and we have been working on some really cool stuff. Local project will be available very soon after build but I want to give you a sneak peek of how that works. Here, I'm looking at the Logic App extension. 
what I can do is I can create a new local project. So I'm going to browse and just create a new folder that represents my logic app. So I'm going to call it my logic app project. All right. So now we have a local project created. I can go back to the Cloud Explorer. Here I have a list of all the logic app that I have built and deployed to Azure. So they are already on the cloud. I can simply right click and say add to my local project. And I can choose multiple ones if I feel like it. And now when I come back to my local project, you will see the logic app that I chose to download from the cloud has been added to part of my local project. What I can do then is to say, let's add a build definition to my local project. What this does is that it will create a set of artifacts that represents the ARM deployment template, so you don't have to handcraft it. But beyond, it also gives you the Azure pipeline definition, so you have something that can get up and running with CI CD without you having to do anything. It requires a couple of pieces of information. So the first is which subscription I want to use to deploy my Logic App. In this case, is Logic Apps PM. The resource group. And lastly, the region. It will generate three files. So the Azure, de Azure resource deployment template, the template parameter, and lastly, the Azure pipeline definition. Now I have all the files I need. I will go to terminal. Let's locate that project that we just created. We'll initialize the Git repository. Add all the files and commit the change. Now we have this local project fully in source control. Let's push that to an Azure DevOps account. I have that already created. And it will simply copy the command that will help me to push my change to the remote repository. Once the file is pushed, and let's just double check to make sure all the files appear here. All I have to do is to go to pipeline. I will say I want to create a new pipeline. It's part of the demo project. You see, this is the Azure pipeline file that we created for you. And I just have to click Run. It will grab all the logic app I have in my local project, build that into an ARM resource deployment template, and send that to the cloud. There you go. So this is local project for VS Code. Like I said, we're working really hard to make it available in the coming month. And stay tuned. Hopefully, you will like it when it comes out. OK, so that's it from the Logic Apps team. Some great new features, I think, like the GA of the integration service environment, the ICE, the GA of the SAP Connector, a brand new feature in preview uh, inline code, allowing you to write JavaScript as part of your Logic App um, itself without having to kind of jump around in the portal and create different resources. And there's some great new VS Code features coming. That's right. Uh, so we have some great references here for you to get you started to learn more about these new features and to try things out, understand what integration means on the Azure Microsoft platform, um, some great backgrounders and how-tos. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll let you have a great Microsoft Build 2019. Thank you.